This talk, Truth is Multidimensional, was given by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar in October 1992 in Lake Delaware, Wisconsin. Dear Panditji, I was surprised to hear you say the mind lives on from life to life. I was hoping mine was an illusion. <laughs> I could get rid of. What is the relationship of soul and mind and karma? Thank you. No, look. You want to get rid of an illusion? How can you get rid of an illusion? How can you renounce a dream? When you have this feeling to get rid of it, it is not yet an illusion for you. So it has its existence. The moment you realize it is an illusion, there is no question of getting rid of it. It has already gone. So if you could realize it's all an illusion, then there is nothing. All that is just the I. Hmm? At one level it does not have any existence, but at another level it does have an existence. Like a river, you know, flowing river. It's not the same water. Every second the water is different. It's not the same river. But yet it is the very old ancient river, thousands of years. Know that always truth is not very simple, it is very complicated. See that? Hmm? It's multi-dimensional. Truth is always multi-dimensional. It contains its opposites within it. Hmm? Like on this planet, it is day and night together. If you hear just this statement, it is day and night at the same time now, your logical mind may question, say how it could be. It could be either day or night. But from a broader perspective, truth is contradictory. It is self-contradictory, only then it is truth. Amazing, right? <laughs> Dear Panditji, could you talk to us about how to deal with fear? As a person living with HIV, dealing with fear of death, fear of loss, fear of pain, etc. Thank you. Hmm? No, look, death is not just customer for people with HIV or AIDS. Everybody dies. Healthy person also dies. Sick person also dies. Isn't it? You think only sick people die? <laughs> huh? There is no such criteria. Everybody dies. Whether healthy, sick, doctor also dies, patient also dies. A rich fellow also dies, poor man also dies. So death is an inevitable reality. Isn't it? Saints have also died. An unsaintly person, unholy man also have died. Everybody dies. Why don't you look at it like this? What is after all death, the last breath, the last act of life? It goes out, never comes in again. That's it, finished. <laughs> Isn't it? When breath leaves and doesn't enter back, that's finished, death. Understand death, you see. It's not the death that is so terrifying to you. It's the fear of death is more terrifying. It could be just fear of anything. Fear of sickness or fear of people, fear of living, fear of love. What are these different emotions? What is lust? What is arrogance? What is fear? We'll go through each one of them. Don't pity yourself. The biggest thing... With the people with HIV and AIDS, is that you start sympathy, you know, self-pity. Comes, oh, I am like this, I am affected by this disease and there is no hope for me. Don't link these two things. Life is short. For everybody it is short. You may live 10 years. Who knows, some healthy person may die within 5 years. If you are 
infected with virus, maybe you may live or live for 10 years. What is the guarantee of life? There is no life insurance in reality. It's only money insurance for others. <laughs> Security for families. Your life is not insured by that. With false idea, we, we cannot buy life with dollars in the bank. Life is so valuable. So when we have that in our hand, why do we worry about death? Why do we worry about something else? Why fear about it? Observe, look at this very life. Be with it. Huh? Live every moment more joyfully. And we have come into this world with tears, crying. We don't need to do that till the last minute. We can exit with a smile. So the time you are alive, be more alive, be more smiling. Keep a smile and make others smile around you. That's all life is about. Okay, so what? You live for 100 years all the time grumbling and grudging and miserable. What is the fun in living so long? No? Do you see people in the coma who are in the bed who are with all the tubes, they are still alive. People, all their relatives somehow hope let them die quickly. But they don't want to even say that. And they are afraid with the same thought in their own mind. Because they don't want their relatives to die, but they wish they should finish off early. Because it's they are miserable with all the tube all over the body, in a state of coma. No, no point in living like that long life. Even life is short, doesn't matter. It should be full of enthusiasm, joy and love radiating. Isn't it? Dear Panditji, could you talk more about offering? I listened to the Bhakti Sutra tape about offering everything and I am not clear on how to offer to the Divine or to you during activity. I am not getting how to do it in extreme emergencies. <laughs> But it seems like I am dividing my mind, not if I think about offering during my daily activities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is that you are offering? It's just a game. Nothing is anyway yours. All that you want to offer have already passed, have gone, have left you. It is to quieten your chattering mind, we say, offer. What you are to offer? What is there you have that you can offer? Is there anything worth you have you can offer? Or unworth that you can offer? There is nothing. Anyway, everything already belongs to the Divine. Just relax. And when you can't relax, you had to do something. We say, all right, offer. <laughs> you see that? Dear Panditji, is there a big difference between an open door and a closed door? I feel like I have been living inside a closed door for years, now waiting for it to open. I sense all the tremendous activity going on behind the door and love and have a feeling of what lives beyond. I feel like my whole life will be transformed when I remove this barrier of the door and walk through it. So my question is, who turns the door knock and opens the door? Me or God or both or other helpers? Wake up, wake up. There is no door. You are in an open field. You are doership. You are wanting to open something, get out of something, is what is really bothering you. See, this is something today. These people get it out. What do you want to get it out? What do you get it out? There is nothing to get out. It's all hollow and empty. And you want to throw something out from there which is not there is a big botheration for you all the time. Because you are asked to identify yourself with all these negative emotions. You got angry and anger just came as a storm and it went. But you thought, I am an angry person, I have all this anger inside me. Can a storm be somewhere permanent in the sky, somewhere? Can any cloud be hanging on somewhere all the time, permanently? It's not so. Same is your situation. Your mind is like a sky. Chida Akasha. So it's like Akasha, the space. And in this Chida Akasha, in this conscious, lively sky of yours, sometimes, 
the cloud of lust comes the cloud of anger comes the cloud of greediness comes cloud of joy comes and such things come and pass you identify yourself with oh i'm like this i'm like this i'm like this and i want to get it out of my system get rid of it and this bothers you more and more this very doership that is why we say surrender drop it you cannot handle your mind all by yourself what you will handle handle the mind the same mind has to handle the same mind <laughs> it's next to impossible so we say drop it surrender and this energy here will flood into you and see that or make you realize that you are really beautiful and there is nothing close there the door itself is an illusion to you hmm? dear panditji i enjoy your program and courses very much however i am confused intellectually you are saying that good and bad will always keep the same balance that means that the more love we feel and give the more hate would be created in some other place it gives me the impression that there is no evolution no positive direction for human race what would then be the purpose of teaching meditation and kriya should we apply our talents to make a better world you are saying that a good thing about the existence of misery is that opens the way to compassion on the other hand compassion is only good because there is misery being love and doing good is your nature like every element has its own nature fire has the nature of burning a flame even if a candle you light a candle and turn it upside down the flame will still go up the very fact you exist you have to act and when you act and when you come from your being you cannot but serve you cannot but spread joy and love that's in your very nature when i say opposite values are complementary i never mean that you should not do anything see that and don't think you are making your life go towards evolution ha in one sense you are removing the obstacles but the evolutionary process is happening the whole creation is moving on it's already moving you only have got to be more close to the nature being more natural you become evolutionary and transformation happens is the doership of transformation i am bringing up a transformation in the world can bog you down with stresses can disappoint you but you are ready there available by your very nature to serve that is called your dharma our very nature we move in our dharma move in our nature hmm? this in no way conflicts with the reality the misery exists there to bring out the compassion from your heart hmm? and when compassion arises it definitely its nature is to reduce misery act with your nature please talk about sex <laughs> what do you want to hear about sex <laughs> the first instinct in you is to breathe the second instinct in you hmm, is to drink third is to sleep and fourth is sex this you have been doing from we don't know how many lifetimes <laughs> what is that you want me to talk about <laughs> whenever an instinct arises there is three part to it the beginning the middle and the end the beginning of the instinct the experience the middle of the instinct and the end of the instinct whenever an instinct begins at that moment you are not aware of the middle and the end but if the memory of it comes into your mind of the middle and the end of the instinct that instinct does not manifest as an uncontrollable thing but it transforms your awareness to higher plane the instinct of sex is very natural to you right from birds and bugs and animals to horses and donkeys and dogs and to human being this is coming this has come but in this body in this human body 
you have this greatest gift of knowing the three phases of an instinct have you seen observed in your sleep you feel very thirsty and then you dream that you drink a glass of water and afterwards you don't feel thirsty suppose you went to bed with the feeling to drink or being hungry or thirsty in the dream you have done it and then you don't feel it anymore because the middle and the end of that experience has completed that instinct so it passes over the consciousness leaving you free and energetic this is a deep subject you have to grasp this point if you are very alert you will grasp what i am saying same thing with all other experience all the nature calls in the body thirst hunger anger sex love all these have their cycle in the realm of consciousness realm of mind the beginning of sex urge looking out going out the middle experience is experience of a consciousness own itself joy some bliss and the end of it relief relaxation in the act what happens you lose the energy and later on in the end there is inertia we will go through different emotion we will see how an over indulgence of any of the senses will bring inertia into the system if you are seeing the television all the time or seeing the colors all the time you don't realize how wonderful the colors are but you meditate and then afterwards you open your eyes and you see such beautiful colors same thing if you are listening to music all the time you lose the sensitivity for the music whichever senses you use more they lose their efficiency to enjoy find joy in that particular sense so the awareness of the completion the wholeness of the sanskaras are the impressions lift you to a plane where you are alive every moment and you are not less joyful you are 100 times more joyful more enthusiastic more energetic that is the whole transformation of consciousness hmm now there is another question about helping your son who is alcoholic you know there is a proverb god only helps those who help themselves right you take one step and god will take several steps hmm if there is even a little bit willingness to move then they could be helped otherwise you know you could simply sit and make everybody be a non alcoholic the whole world can change like that but that's not the natural law the natural law demands one step from your side and there will be a hundred steps from the nature side water is coming only cup has to be upright you say my son you have two sons but see from my place so many sons are there, right how many millions so see from this angle then the pain that catches on to you because of that person will relieve you know your mind become will become more fresh and in the present see if you yourself are upset how can you help someone else not possible na and how not to get upset by seeing this it's not just a look isolated problem it is a bigger problem anything big does not bother you <laughs> including god <laughs> so problem also you make it bigger extra chit if you say i have two sons they are alcoholic it bothers you but if you say i have a thousand sons who are alcoholic the quality of botheration changes <laughs> do you see that this would be important Dear Pandaji, I want to keep the seat of my heart only for you, but I feel love for other saints also. Is this all right? Anyone you see, love should simply flow, and it does have. See that same beauty in everybody. Everybody is loving. See beyond the outer covering of people. You'll see yourself in everyone. Then, see that there is nothing wrong in honoring and loving everybody. That is fine. but then your mind will get into this conflict either this person or that person you know you see the duality there lot of duality lot of confusion so to avoid all that if you could love totally unconditionally 
and then you will see that same love spreads to everybody you will not pick up oh this is a saint i love him and he is not a saint i don't love him love is your very nature you can't but love you can't but be in love ha huh, but following other masters other teacher there is a problem that you can create for yourself that is your mind get attracted to okay i listen to so and so very wonderful saint all right you'll go and they'll say okay you do this 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 and you start following that and you start following this then you mix up so many things and mind is in such a terrible confusion then you know you'll go and ask somebody how about doing kriya and they'll say well kriya is not necessary you just do singing and you go to someone else they say singing is not necessary you just sit still and meditate everyone is right everybody has their path everybody has their defined way to put you on this thing no but if you take so many things and move all over it won't help you really it is not possible so it's best to be in one lineage one tradition and just follow that through so what i'm saying that is very good and the main thing that if you have come to a master if you have kept a full seat to a master then you will see that love in everybody you are part of it all these divisions in the mind simply vanishes dissolves hmm? dear pandaji this is my first course where i've sung bhajans could you talk about the value of the singing when we are talking we're all thinking differently every mind is thinking different different right different thoughts but when you are singing what is happening the same thought the same word moves in all the minds see that the same word which resonates moves through all the minds so there is a unity that's why music or singing has been such a part of all the religions in the world hmm? all the tradition you know anywhere you go they sing together the same sound resonates in all the mind now with the sanskrit thing there is an added advantage it horizontally unites the consciousness the conscious mind it also vertically unites because sanskrit being the most ancient the oldest sound language uh, of the consciousness so there it unites all different layers of consciousness hmm? very very ancient 20000 years ago because the mind is very old though body is getting newer and newer every day the mind remains the same it's the same old mind because hmm? energy is not destroyed and mind is energy no love what is that ha ah, conservation of energy mind being energy it cannot be destroyed so it is never destroyed and it has continued from ages it's an old mind so our mind is not just 2000 year old or 3000 year old or 5000 year old it is much 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 older much older than the stones the mind is very ancient so it take the most ancient sounds and that has a uniting effect have you noticed this some of the sounds though we don't understand it does have its own energy and feeling about it when we sing dear panaji This is my first course and I wanted to know what should I be getting out of these practices that we're doing Don't be in a race to get something what is that you want to get how much you have gotten what more you want to get Okay you get all that in the unit then what you will do with that what you will do You know in India if you go in small villages there are these dogs when you go in a car the dogs will chase the car because it see the car as something you know, and they will chase and they will overtake the car but once they have overtaken they don't know what to do <laughs> they turn around they look very stupid <laughs> the car has stopped <laughs> they look very miserable <laughs> they are ahead of the car now what to do <laughs> the same thing huh <laughs> the whole thing is to give there is a joy in giving which is much greater than the joy in getting hmm? we become greedy in every aspect we want to get more more if not material something more 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 spiritual what do you will do what more spiritual you want 
very spiritual path is from coming from the space of giving. Okay, what more I can contribute? How I can be more useful to people around? If I come from this angle, hmm? let me get rid of all this stuff I am carrying on. Look into this, huh? Dear Panditji, could you give me some advice concerning my relationship with my parents? And what does it mean to honor one's mother and father? First thing, don't dig into the past. When you meet them, meet them as a completely new person. Do not go to give any explanation to them about your behavior or try to correct their misunderstandings. Our biggest problem is we try to correct our misunderstanding and we make it more. Isn't it? Oh, I didn't mean that way. They are not convinced by what you say. But just your loving presence will change their whole mental attitude and feelings. See what I'm saying? Use very few words that is good enough. And those few words should come from your heart. And just accept them whatever they are saying, they are doing fine. Honoring them means allowing them to be what they are. If they tell you, you are not caring for me, oh, that's how you felt. That's not so, I care for you. That's it, enough. Nothing more. And keep a smile. The desire to achieve perfection is very normal. Because perfection is normal. Perfection is not extraordinary. It is ordinary. And three levels of perfection can be achieved. And you have it, actually. One is perfection in action. Perfection in expression or words and perfection in feelings. Some are very good in action. They do perfect action. But not necessarily they feel their words are perfect or their feelings are perfect. Some have wonderful feeling, very good feeling inside. But their actions are not so perfect. Some speak very nicely, their speech is perfect, but their action is not perfect. It is imperfection that brings irritation in you. You see somebody saying something that they shouldn't say, that is not perfect, that's not right, then you get agitated. Now what has happened? Your feelings have become imperfect now. Too positive, too negative. Fault in their speech, but your mind became faulty. Are you listening to what I'm saying? <laughs> Someone may feel wonderful inside. They feel clear, easy, but they may speak something out of their habit. Their expression, they don't mean what they say, but they don't feel what they say. Many times mother tells their kids, you get lost. <laughs> And she doesn't mean that, she doesn't feel that. But she say, jealousy and sense of loss, generosity and sense of humor. Someone's heart may be perfect, speech may be perfect, but their action is little slothy. The antidote, completely opposite emotion, but they bring out the sensation in the same area. That's why from the past, wise team men have very nice. They'll say yes, yes, they'll say they'll do it, but when it comes to action, it is so slow. <laughs> they never do what they say. Always said, pleasure and pain and everything is same. Everything is same, how? Because everything is intense sensation. Have you seen people who are laughing so much? And there is perfection in action, but the words are so harsh. Every time you expect some perfection in other speech or in action, see that you don't lose that balance or perfection of your inner feelings, your mind. See what I'm saying? If they say something, doesn't matter, see them beyond their words. Never mind any words from anybody. No more, please, please, please. And crying, you know, start crying. You can't even bear laughing so long. If you cross the words, you have crossed the world also. And that is perfection in inner silence, inner being. Hmm? 
Every emotion has a corresponding sensation in the body. This we have not observed. When emotion comes, we simply float in the emotion, get lost in the event outside. The most interesting thing is that emotion has triggered something in this body in some parts. When we don't attend to that, it we get into a cycle. It's painful. Jealousy, sense of loss, generosity and humor, laughter. What we have started observing is the sensation or the emotion. See where, what happens? Have you observed? When you get angry, where the sensation is? Have you observed where you feel grief, when you feel sad? Have you observed where you feel the sensation, when you feel jealous about something, somebody? Hmm? Joy in the navel region. Now the same energy moves upward in the heart region, manifests in three forms, fear, hatred and love. When you are afraid, something is happening. Have you observed? When you feel happy, joyful, what is happening? Your inhalation is stronger and you don't know when you exhale. Flower, you say. Ah, beautiful, very nice. Man. You say something. Ah, very good. You taste something. You say, very good. Anything beautiful, anything nice, the pleasure, enjoyment, the energy moves upward. And when you are so tired, disgusted, <laughs> grumbling, you say, <laughs> your exhalation is stronger and powerful. Have you seen that? So much frustration. Happening <laughs> huh? in the heart. The fear in the heart region, something happens. And in love, an obvious truth in life. And it brings a relief. False emotions come with that, you know, outgoing breath and it brings relief to the system. Hmm? So pleasure. And how long can you have the pleasure? Any pleasure becomes painful within a short period of time. Hmm? Suppose you also the same region and hatred, same region. And you will see fear turns into hatred, hatred turns... <laughs> In the 11th serving, you'll say, oh, please, excuse me. I'm sorry. Why? The same pie which was cause of your pleasure became a cause of your pain. Isn't it? Our senses have limited capacity to enjoy. The beautiful scenery, okay, this lake is so wonderful. Autumn, beautiful colors. All the leaves are turning colors. You go and sit there, see. How long can you watch them? <laughs> Keep your eyes wide open, go on looking at it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What do you do with that beautiful then? A few minutes, your eyes will get tired. However beautiful a scene is, surrounding is, a body is, or a thing is, an object is, your senses cannot enjoy it after a limit, after a threshold. But mind is not satisfied. It's a bucket without a bottom. It doesn't get filled. The mind is not filled. It goes again and again and this and this and this. Unless it looks into its source itself as joy. The one energy, the life energy in us, manifests in various colors and forms in the upward motion and the downward movement. Hmm? The base of the spine, this very energy manifests in two forms, either as inertia or as interest in life. It moves to the second point behind the genital, behind the organ. The same energy manifests as sex energy or creative energy, creative or procreative. If your mind is all the time thinking about the sex, it becomes very less creative. And if some mind is full of creative ideas, those moments you see the sex drive is not that strong in the mind. Because there is creativity, something want to create, comes. Now, 
we don't need to label one thing good another thing bad i want this i don't want this we simply understand know them as such this is as such the suchness of it it's like this now the same energy moves upward in the navel region manifests in four forms what jealousy hmm? often there is jealousy between couples if someone else does something it doesn't cause so much jealousy as much as it is somebody who is close to you and when you feel jealous where do you notice the sensation have you observed it's in the navel region stomach region jealousy and sense of loss whenever you have had some loss as though you lost something what is happening something in the navel region some tightness happens there so also joy you know because we say a belly full of laughter you know? <laughs> says buddha has a big belly and he laughs so joy also the same energy manifests in two forms in four ways huh? two positive two negative jealousy and sense of loss generosity and sense of humor the antidote completely opposite emotion but they bring out the sensation in the same area that's why from the past wise people men have always said pleasure and pain and everything is same everything is same how because everything is intense sensation have you seen people who are laughing so much and say oh no more please 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 <laughs> and crying you know start crying you can't even bear laughing so long because it is intense it's painful jealousy sense of loss generosity and humor laughter joy in the navel region now the same energy moves upward in the heart region manifests in three forms fear hatred and love when you are afraid what is happening something is happening in the heart fear see the fear in the heart region something happens and in love also the same region and hatred same region and you will see fear turns into hatred hatred turns into love love turns into fear fear is a circle this triangle of these three either one of them exists and the same energy moves up in the throat region manifests as gratefulness gratitude or sorrow grief grief or gratitude in both you will experience the throat choking you see when you say i can't speak my throat is choking means you are so full of gratitude gratefulness at the same time when you are so sad unhappy something happens in the throat your throat chokes same energy manifests in two forms in the throat region now this moves upward in the forehead region it manifests again another two form anger and alertness you see a person who is perfection it want everything perfect is very alert he is more prone to anger he gets more angry a very dull person does not get angry also he doesn't even put that much effort to get be angry <laughs> a dull person just gets sad or maybe nothing but someone who is alert someone who wants precision also gets angry very easily and quickly perfection is the cause of anger wanting perfection seeing perfection is bliss <laughs> the same energy moves up to the top of the head manifests bliss it's called bliss there is no two for it there is no opposite of it it's one energy completion and in ancient india they call this as chakras chakras means the wheels wheel means what it goes round in circles from one to another one to another you have fear and fear causes hatred because you don't want to be afraid so you are you hate and the hatred brings love gets attachment and from love causes fear like this this goes in circle same thing joy because of joy you have a sense of oh you may lose it so sense of losing the joy you know causes jealousy like this they said these are all chakras means centers where the energy manifests in different colors different forms different emotions 
Now, when you put your attention, what happens? It moves from one to another. All that is false, fall away. The transformation happens. When you put your attention, the anger turns into alertness. Huh? The upward movement of this, from love, you become aware of this love. You become grateful. The gratitude comes, and from gratefulness, knowledge opens, alertness opens, bliss dawns. Hmm? Otherwise, you are grief, you are unhappy. You are sad, and because of that you are afraid, or you hate. Because of that you also feel jealous and uncomfortable. You see somebody else being happy, you feel very uncomfortable, jealous. And to get rid of jealous, you know, you, you make all sorts of things. You know? Observation brings this transformation. That's what we do, polishing the system, observing again and again and again and again, come to the realization of this is all bliss. Hmm? The existence, truth means that which exists. What exists now? The body is existing. The breath is existing. Mind is going here and there. Okay, bring the mind with the body and breath together. Sat, the truth has come. This is producing chit, the consciousness. Lively conscious. Ananda. The bliss is coming up with this. Hmm? That's what the chant huh? says. Sachidanand Rupoham. I am not these moving emotions, they are all changing their colors. I am the substance, the basic substance of all this, the life that is consciousness, truth, and bliss. That's what I am. How can you brand yourself, I am an angry person, or I am a lustful person, I am such a person, such a person, this, that. What is it? Just look in, observe, polish, find it's nothing, it's one energy changing, 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 changing. Blissful. Hmm? The relationship between the mind and the being is that of a player and a commentator. In a play field, what is that, football? Soccer, what do you call it? Football. The players are in the field and in that little box there is a commentator sitting and commenting all the time. No? But what has happened, the reverse has happened. The players are stuffed into that little box. The commentator is in the field commenting aloud. Players are stuck in the little box. How does the commentator affect the players? You know, the commentator says, Oh, in 19... What? 1965, this game happened, 1977, 1988, and this so-and-so played like this, and all that stuff, non-stop. And the player is somebody else who is playing. Hmm? Same thing in life, what happens, the happening in the world. The divine is playing the whole thing, but the little mind is giving commentary non-stop. We say, okay, stop, listen, it goes on. It doesn't really matter what it says. The game anyway goes on. So we'll realize that, we'll see, we'll not listen to the commentator, we directly look at the game that is happening, straight away look into the game. You know, when people are watching a game, they don't bother about the commentator, right? So keep aside all these things, books and huh? talking, giving your opinions, I like this, I don't like this. See, many times nobody asks you, do you like this? You volunteer and say, I like this, I don't like this. <laughs> and what is the guarantee your likes and dislikes stay the same? They change at any time. Your moods change. Say, I feel this way. So what? You feel that way? You feel bad? Good. I say, good. <laughs> How long can you feel bad? Forever? Impossible. Your feelings change. You're feeling very, very bad and then you feel good and then you feel like that, you feel like this. So what? What's the big deal about it? Why to sit and talk so much about I feel this way, I don't feel that way. And this is... We can conserve all our energy, you know, put all that thing aside. Then we'll observe the nature of this mind. What is this mind, this stuff which makes my hand move, make my eyes blink, listen, taste, smell, touch? That that is responsible for all this in the creation. What is that substance? 
will be in touch with ourselves. No, when we are alone, we we tend to say, "Oh, I am bored being by myself." No, many of you say, "Oh, I'm it's so boring." If you are so bored being with yourself, how much boring you must be for somebody else? <laughs> Two people got bored with themselves and they bore each other. <laughs> no? Shivoham, Shivoham, Shiva Swarupoham, Shivoham, Shivoham. Shiva Swarupoham Shivoham Shivoham Shiva Swarupoham I am Shiva, my nature is Shiva. My nature is Shiva. Nityoham, Shuddoham, Buddhoham, Muktoham. Shiva means what? Innocent, beneficent, beautiful, transcendental, absolute. Nityoham, eternal. Always. Shuddhoham, pure, ever pure. Like a diamond, even if a diamond is in a gutter, still it is pure, no? Nothing sticks to it. Nityoham, Shuddhoham, Buddhoham, Muktoham. Buddhoham, enlightened. Muktoham, free, ever free. Shivoham, Shivoham, Shiva Swarupoham, Shivoham, Shivoham, Shiva Swarupoham, Nityo. Shuddhoham, Buddhoham, Muktoham, Shivoham, Shivoham, Shiva Swarupoham, Brahmo. Advaita, the only one, Ananda, blissful, Rupam, Arupam. I have no farm, still I move in the farm. Though I move in the farm, I don't have any farm. Advaita Mananda, Rupam, Arupam, Brahmo. consciousness and not just the body it's not like stone it's not it's all alive alive every cell is full of consciousness life 
Chido Khan Chido Truth Consciousness and Bliss. That is what I made up. Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Shivo Ham Shivo Ham